Good day, everyone. Welcome to another lesson under Child and Adolescent Learners and Learning Principles. Our talking points for this session is about the factors affecting growth and development. After this lesson, you will be able to identify the different factors that affect the growth and development. Let's start with the factors affecting development. We actually have three factors. First is maternal nutrition. One important factor affecting development is maternal nutrition. Of course, it is very known to us that mother supplies all the nutrients to the inborn fetus through the food intake so that she should take care of her diet for her sake and for that of the fetus. It is important that she gets a continuous supply of fresh vegetables, fruits, minerals, and vitamins needed. The second factor that affects development is child nutrition. Adequate nutrition contributes to the continuous brain growth, rapid skeletal and muscular development. It is not the amount of food that the child eats, but what they eat that contributes to healthy living. A healthy diet includes an adequate supply of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, food rich in protein and calcium like meat and dairy products. We also include colorful foods such as oranges, apples, tomatoes, and green vegetables are not only appealing but also highly nutritious. And the third factor that affects development is early sensory stimulation. Children under 6 years of age tend to be farsighted because their eyes have not matured and are shaped differently from those of adults. After that age, the eyes not only are more mature but can focus better. Minority of children's vision does not develop properly. About 10% of 6-year-olds have defective near vision and 7% have defective distant vision. The latter number jumps to 17% by 11 years of age. Sensory deprivation exists in terms of the reception of sounds from the environment. Same with visual handicaps, children may also suffer from auditory problems. Again, we have three factors affecting development, maternal nutrition, child nutrition, and early sensory stimulation. Now, let's move on to the factors that affect growth. We actually have six factors. The first one is genetic history. According to Lane Levitsky, a medical doctor, chief of the Pediatric Induction Unit of Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, the child's genetic history influences to a large extent of his growth. As a matter of fact, it is number one in the list. By just looking at the parent's height, the rate of growth of the child can more or less be predicted. So they say it's all about the genes. Second factor is nutrition. It is another factor that affects growth. Without a good diet, kids won't grow normally, says Joanne Hatner, a resident doctor and a pediatric specialist of the American Dietic Society. Sometimes, parents miss an assuring and wholesome calories for the child, thus derailing his chances for a healthy diet. A child, no matter how fat, should never be put on diet. He must have in his diet nutritious food but less in juice or soda which can interfere with the child's appetite for food rich in needed nutrients. Third factor that affects growth is medical condition. Children born or with developed series of medical conditions can have stunted growth if not treated. Some of these are gastrointestinal disorders such as celiac disease, food allergies, thyroid problems, hormone deficiency, heart, kidney, liver ailments, and certain chromosomal abnormalities. It is important that medications are monitored closely. The fourth factor that affects growth is exercise. Regular physical activity promotes growth 
by strengthening bones and muscles. However, cautions should be observed in doing high-impact sports like running and gymnastics because they can too impede growth if done excessively. Moreover, they can cause trauma to developing bones. Indeed, playing outside was our exercise when we were kids. The fifth factor is sleep. About 70 to 80 percent of growth hormone is secreted during sleep. That is according to Paul Sanger and medical doctor, a pediatric endocrinologist at Children's Hospital in New York City. That is why when we were kids, our parents, especially our moms, would always force us to sleep. We have nap time or even shasta time. But eventually, we'll escape because we just want to play. And sixth factor is emotional well-being. Children must be nurtured with love, patience, and understanding. They need a supportive family environment. When children experience anxieties brought by emotional neglect or too much tension, growth is also stunted. The condition called psychosocial growth failure by doctors is extremely rare, but its consequences are as real as malnutrition. Again, the factors affecting the growth are genetic history, nutrition, medical conditions, exercise, sleep, and emotional well-being. Are you learning? I hope you are. If you have questions, message me in our Moodle chat box. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye. 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 -bye. We hope you learned something. Bye. Bye.